Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're doing a splatch. What's a splatch? It's a split batch. I bought me some Thiol Libre from Escarpment Labs and I want to test it out. Best way to test it out is to do a comparison run with a normal yeast. I'm going to go with USO5. So we're going to compare USO5 to Thiol Libre on a Cascade Pale Ale. Why Cascade? Because that has a lot of bound thiols and Thiol Libre is supposed to free them. Let's go! Party time, party time, party time brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. Okay, the water's ready for the mash. This time we're doing brew in a bag. Let's get the bag. Wait. And I forgot that a previous patch kind of ripped open during my last brew, so I had to harness my inner grandma again and sew this bag back up. Then I measured out the grain. I had originally planned on doing a smash, but I ran out of pail, so measured out the grain, milled the grain, then dumped it in. And since I was on such a roll, I forgot that I didn't add water salts, so I measured out the water salts. You can see the profile here and threw them in the mash. Then I tripped over the propane tank, covered it up, and put a blanket over it to keep the heat in. At this point I realized I forgot to mash hop. With the thiol releasing type yeast, they recommend mash hopping to add some fruitiness to the beer and to release more aroma. I use cascade hops for this since they are said to have a bunch of bound thiols that this yeast may be able to release. But what the f are thiols? From the Omega yeast brochure, they are. Highly impactful aroma compounds found in fruits, hops, and even barley. In free form, they are highly aromatic. In precursor form, they are bound and without aroma. Most of the thiol compounds present in beer and wort are in precursor form, making it a rich stockpile for a hidden aroma potential with fermenting with a thiol release in yeast. Omega has the Cosmic Punch, and Escarpment has the Thiol Libre, which I'm using here. The recommendation from the Escarpment webpage is for 5 to 8 grams of hops per liter of wort. Sadly, I didn't follow the directions and only used 90 grams of Cascade for the batch, which only ends up being about 1.5 grams per liter. Close it up and back on with the sleeping bag. Now we'll mash for an hour. Once the mash was done, I took the sleeping bag off and set up my block and tackle on the ladder to lift the grain. I like doing this for the larger batches. This is a 15 gallon batch, so it makes it a lot easier. And the block and tackle takes a lot of pressure off the lift. Here at Party Time Brewing, we're on the cutting edge of brewing a bag. Find an old grate from a stove. Found this on the side of the road. Put some tie wraps on it. And you now have brewing a bag squisher. See if it works or leaks everywhere. It worked. For one brief moment, I felt like a damn genius. Even though I'm probably not the person that came up with this little technique, it worked really well and I thought of it on my own. It saved a lot of time, got the grain bed drier, and was a lot easier to handle, especially on this larger batch. Once it got up to a boil, I got Timmy from Passions to add another 90 grams of Cascade for the 60 minute hop edition. Then I went for a sweet rip on the banana board, kinda worried it would break underneath me, and attempted to school my son at basketball. I'm pretty sure I lost. Yep, I lost. Another 45 grams of Cascade was added at the 30 minute mark, 90 more grams of Cascade at the 10 minute mark, and finally we threw in 180 grams of Cascade for the Whirlpool. And here's the point where the splatch begins. I chose to use two buckets just because that would give the most equal results between the two, and I used my Riptide pump to transfer the wort into the buckets. I pumped from a high height in order to aerate the wort as much as possible. I pumped what was left into the all-rounder, and we'll talk about that another day. Okay, so we got the wort done. Let's uh, pitch some yeast. Start with 11 and a half grams, which is one pack of USO5 going in this bucket. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. The USO5 bucket. Then we got for the other one, and the reason for this splash, the Thiol Libre, I think. Thiol Libre, yeah, that one. So we're going with this for the other one. Sanitize it. Yay. Drippy. Sanitize scissors. Because I am that worried. Cut it with the scissors. And we pitch it in the other one. And the yeast was pitched. But here's another gleaming example of me forgetting to prepare. I didn't have enough lids with holes in them, so I had to drill a new one. Another tip of the day, the step drill works great for drilling holes in plastic bucket lids. Now that the hole's done, we'll check the original gravity and it turned out to be 1.047. Then I put them in a closet and fermented at 19 degrees for about two weeks. 
And here's the pores. First one, no thio libre. You can tell I left it off the CO2 for a while. It's not the best carbonation that I've ever seen. And the second one, here's the beer with the thio libre. I had that one on carbonation, so it's a little bit better and it's gonna throw off my taste in a little bit, but whatever, let's see what kind of genius remarks I can make about this beer. Okay, so the beer's done, it's time to give them a taste. Gave them a pour already, and this is what they look like. They've been sitting around for a bit, so the head's kind of disappeared a bit, but as you can see, pretty much the exact same beer. And luckily I used the exact same glass, so I kind of lost track of which one was which. Let's go in for a sniff. Sniffing. This one has a very pale ale taste. I got a little bit of hops off that. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Not expecting this one to... Yeah, first guess, this one's probably not the Thio Libre. Let's see if this one has a different taste. Smell, smell. Yeah, with this one I'm getting a little bit more fruity smell off of it. Um, I'm pretty confident this one's the Thio Libre. Normal pale ale A hint of fruitiness, fruitiness, yep. And one of the things is when I did when I did transfer over to the kegs, it was a crazy difference between the the kind of smell of one and the other. One of them had the super fruity, super fruity, that's the good description of it. And one of them smelled like a good pale ale. So let's go in for the taste. Let's uh, try the, what I think is the normal Cascade, pretty much a Cascade pale ale. Like I said, sniffed already. Yeah, it's not too bitter. It's just a good pale ale. I don't really know what to explain any more than that. Let's uh, give it another go. Yeah, I get a tiny bit of tiny bit of hoppy goodness off on the back end. Uh, a little bit of maybe a little bit of fruity taste. I don't I don't know. It's going for the the uh, PS de resistance or what I think is the PS de resistance. Again, smell it, a lot different. Probably should have rinsed my palate a bit, but eh, just bitterness. I definitely carbonated this one better. I had them carbonated in different fridges under different tanks, so probably not the best for the experiment, but this one's carbonated a little bit nicer. And for the taste, uh, the first thing I'm kind of getting is, I think I'm getting a little bit of phenolics on there. Uh, nothing nothing too nuts. It's not a, not a bad phenolics taste, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit of Phenols, phenolics, phenolics, phenols, phenolics. One of those two. And definitely get a hint of, hint of banana -y flavor. So I still got the bitterness, kind of the same bitterness as this one, but I am getting a little bit of banana-y, banana -y, banana -y, banana -y, and phenolics off of this one. So kind of tasting closer to, still a good pale ale, like when you have a big swig. Yeah, it tastes closer, pale ale wit beer or something along those lines. I don't know exactly the terminology to use for it, but it's definitely good. It smells, the smells came through. Um, but a little bit of the after research, uh, what I did find with these is that the the Thio Libre, apparently if you ferment it hot, it's supposed to, they recommend not fermenting it hot because if you do that, it's gonna give off some phenolics and kind of be closer to a wit beer. They actually recommend on the website that if you want to give it a shot or do some experimenting, try fermenting it at around 30 degrees and you might be able to use it for your kind of wit beers. But I only fermented it, it may have got up to 22 at the most. And it does, it seems like it, those flavors really came through. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this isn't the first time I gave it a taste. First time I gave it a taste, I just thought the batch had been totally spoiled by maybe a a uh, natural yeast or something that got into there. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't, not what I thought it was supposed to taste like. This is a clean pale ale. This, I don't know, mix between a pale ale and a Wizen or something like that. I think that's the word. But either way, I, and then uh, recently, and then after that, I got an email from someone and they showed me a little clip from the, the site that said, don't use, they didn't recommend using American Pilsner malt in this. I think I used a little bit of American Pilsner malt in it and it did give off the phenolics. So on the website it says you can use the American Pale Ale, no problem, but if you're using the American Pilsner, you may get some phenolics or undesirables. But it's also something that you can test or you can uh, try different different types of malts with. Um, each, each type of malt has kind of different levels of bound thiols, 
and there may be a malt out there that gives a really fruity, you might even get a fruity taste just from the malt and no fancy uh, hops in there. And yeah, that's basically it. I kind of got surprised on the, the wit, wit beeriness of this one here, but if you do look on the website, that is kind of an off, something that can happen there. Um, and also another thing, I, I just went with the Cascade hops, but really what you'd want to do is you probably want to do for those bound thiols, like use, say they use the Cascade hops in like a big mash hop, get that actual five to eight grams instead of the 1.5 that I used in this. And on the, on the back end of it in the Whirlpool and stuff, you want to use your normal, if you want to really make it a good hazy or something like that, keep using your normal Galaxy or Citras or your really flavorful hops because, because as much as the Thiol Libre, it's gonna, it's gonna maybe unbound some thiols, give you some nice aromas there. It's not gonna replace the, the flavor in the end. Thiols are more of a aroma factor. You're gonna get that nice fruity aroma off of it, but it's not necessarily gonna replace the taste. So you're still gonna have to use your kind of good hops or maybe your go-to hops at the end to, to get that really good flavor out of the beer. And finally, another thing that I would love to try but couldn't find a supply for it and seems like it's hard to get a supply for, maybe coming soon will be videos on it, but is for the Thiol Libre and even the Cosmic Punch, uh, the Omega's version of it, they recommend using something called Phantasm in the, in the Whirlpool. What Phantasm is, it's basically a New Zealand Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc grape skin that's kind of a byproduct of the, after I guess it's after they're all mashed up, and then they dry that and it's available as an adjunct. Apparently, if you throw those in the throw those in the whirlpool, you should be able to get a lot more, maybe a lot more usage or a lot more unbound thiols coming off of those uh, when the yeast does its magic. And there are a bunch of beers out there that have used Phantasm. I think they say with Phantasm in them, and the reviews are a tiny bit mixed on them. But a lot of people are saying they're really good, and a lot of people want to try them. So I'd really like to get my hands on some of that Phantasm and give a give it a go. And I will if I ever see it, and then let you know how it goes. But for now, we got two beers in my hand. Two beer, two beers. And they kind of need to go. So let's go with the let's go with the old one first. This may take a bit. Not bad. Good, good pale ale. Definitely recommend that plain recipe, which you can see below. And let's give the old Thiol Libre one last gulp. See if I can get some any extra notes off of the, the chug. Yeah, still got the phenols in there. One second. <coughs> okay, that was really nice. Um, yeah, so if you follow along for this long, you might as well like the video. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see some more Party Time Brewing videos. Uh, a lot of product reviews, a lot of grain to glass, like this one here from recently. And just, we'll just have some fun. Maybe try to get some live streams on the go sometime soon. But until then, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and talk to you later.